All right then, guys. Today we're gonna do, today we're gonna be doing a Ponobo.kr challenge. I haven't done one of these in a while, and I was gonna do a hack the box today, but it was just a long day today. I'm just getting trying to get over it this week. Maybe next week I'm gonna start grinding the hack the box challenges and get finished with them. But right now we're gonna be doing a Ponobo.kr. So with this challenge, we're gonna be doing BOF, which is uh, I guess stands for Buffer Overflow. If you guys don't know what BOF stands for, and it's a challenge worth five points, and we're giving two files to download and something to connect to. So, first thing I did was just I uh, download both these files. So let's just check bof.c. Bof. Oh, bad cat. To make it a little bit more nice, bad cat. And my bad if I sound sick. I think I am. I just have like a stuffy nose. So anyway, we cap bof.c and we see uh, I guess two functions. The main function which starts our program. So we get we pass we have function a function called func, and it's passing in ox dead beef. An OX dead beef is being passed into this function, so it's a key. Then we have a over, I guess, overflow me an array overflow me thirty two bytes, and it has a printf overflow me. Then after that, it has a get. So I'm guessing we input into this specific array, and then if the key is equal to OX, OX cafe babe, then we get I guess the shell. And for this challenge, I guess you want to ask yourself, how do we control key for the most part? Because we don't, there's no like way to input key. So for this challenge, it's basically a buffer overflow challenge. And what we're gonna do is find a way to overwrite key, even though we don't have access to it. And one way to do it is because of this get function. If you guys don't know, get is uh, susceptible to buffer overflow, as I have right here. Because why is get bad? If I think if I click on this, oh my bad. Uh, Oh, so I guess it cannot limit the data that is read by the function. So that means basically there's no we could input as much as we want into into this overflow me until it goes past 32 bytes, and then once it gets past 32 bytes, that's that memory or that that like information or that whatever we're putting inside here gets laid onto key, which is how which is what we're gonna do right now. And we could use Ghidra for the most part because we're given the binary, so we could decompile it in Ghidra and figure out how much. How much values we need to go put in so we could overflow the stack and then after after that what we could do is just simply use uh gdb for this challenge for the most part so how do we use gdb so i have gdb gef so it makes it a little bit easier for me so gdb gef which is a uh, like a hands version of gdb uh, you guys can install it using this if you have GDB installed, and it's pretty pretty easy. But anyway, I'll use mine. So anyway, so I'll just run GDB BOF. Oh wait, oh. and see if we get this. So we'll do disassemble main to see what we have. So disassemble main, we have like something that's very similar to what BOF.C outputted, but we see that it's getting passed to uh, this funk. Uh, this func function. So what we'll do is disassemble func. Then what we'll do next is we'll before the comparison happens, we'll do we'll stop at this comparison. So how so I guess one way we could do breakpoints on GDB is just by typing break star the name of the function. In our case it's func. And then we'll just do plus uh forty because that's where it compares the comparison happens. So plus forty all right, break, oh, star, funk, plus 40. We'll do that. And then after that, we'll just run it. This is run, running the program. It's asking overflow me. So I'll just, I'll just put a bunch of A's. And then we're right here at this currently where it's a bunch of A's. So we want to check what ESP is holding currently. So how do we do that for the most part? So what we'll do is just do dash, oh, X dash, X to show memory. And we'll do, we want to show the top 50 bytes, and then we'll want to print them out as a hexadecimal word size of then dollar sign ESP, which is the stack pointer. So we do something like that. It prints out, I guess, our memory layout. And then I guess if you guys don't notice is this dead beef functionality right here, dead beef. Interesting, no? Because if we look back, Kali Linux right here. Can we go LS, CD, desktop, uh, pwn. Uh, cat 
bof.c. Oh, wait, back cap. Back cap. If you see right here, key, what we input it right here, key, is is set to uh, ox dead beef, but we we don't want and then key, so key is equal to ox dead beef, and is that equal to ox cafe babe? No, it's not, since it right here has dead beef, so what we want to do is be able to overwrite this. Now, how do we do this? What we could do is compare our a's. So if you guys don't know what a is represented in hex, we just do it simply right here, Python three, and then we do ox forty one. We see it prints out 65. So we do char 65. This should print out A. Oh. And that's A. So we see that there's one. There's one, two, three, four A's. So four A's being printed out here. And then another four. So that's eight. And then what's this? 12. So we printed out 12 A's. And then we see how many A's that we put inside here. This is our input or like ESP. So if you just do this, so if you just do something like len of then of this, it's gonna it should be 12. 12. So that means it takes us 12 to reach here. So that's four, uh, eight, 12. But we still have a long way until we reach uh, dead beef because that's when we're able to overwrite it. So we could just simply count this. So it's four. So this, is, so this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wait, wait, wait. I'm at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So take us thirteen, thirteen of them to reach OX dead beef. So how do we calculate this? So we just do thirteen. And then every one of these could hold, like, I guess, uh, 1A four times. So we'll just do uh, times four. And that's going to come out to 52. So let's just run this again. And then what we'll do is just do length of 50. Uh, we'll do 52 times A. So I'll print it out 52 times. And then we'll just see all of this memory be filled up with uh, A's and so it'll stop like uh, it'll stop around here. We'll see all of this filled up with A's, all of this. And then after that, technically, after we reach 52, we could just manipulate this part of the variable. So I'll just rerun this again. And then we'll just do this and put this. And then we press enter. And then after that, what we'll do next is just follow the same command which we did before. And we see all of this being filled up with A's, all of this. You see this? But it didn't reach, oh, oh I guess they overrode a little bit because, yeah. But for the most part, now we could just fill in our uh, our, our value that we want. So in our case, we want to fill it in with uh, Cafe Babe. We want key to be overrunning with Cafe Babe. So that's what we'll do for the most part. And I already wrote a script for this challenge. So if I just exit out, exit. And then after that, we'll just look at bad cat solve.py. What I did was just put 52 A's, which is what we got here. 52. Oh, yeah, 52. 52 A's. Then after that, I just depended cafe bay P32 just does it like in a reverse order. And after that, I do a remote connect to the remote server that they gave us under remote connection that they gave us with a uh, with pull tools and after that i send it the line i send our payload and then i put interactive because we're supposed to get a shell from uh from this if you look right here if it passes it correctly we get a benesh shell so anyway so if you run this python 3 solve.py now switch to interactive so we type ls that means we should have a shell so let's just test this out for a bit ls and then boom, we have a shell. Now we type cat flag. Oh, wait, we could type ID. Where the user buffer overflow. So now if we just type cat flag or cat flag, 
we get the flag so which was pretty easy challenge we probably could have found the offset a lot easier using uh Ghidra for the most part but it was pretty fun learning just getting used to uh going this login first but anyway yeah that was about it for the chance yeah and like i said before you could probably find the offset a lot quicker using Ghidra but it's a lot cool getting used getting used to a debugger and trying to figure it out but anyway that was about it for this challenge hopefully you guys learned something new today uh this is pretty simple buffer overflow but anyway yeah and yeah see you guys in the next one peace